Now where the hell did I put that? No? Not, not in there. Uh, doesn't seem like it's in Where did I put that fucking thing? Huh. It appears I'm recording. What's up everybody, it's Austin here from Mad Dragon Gaming, and I hope you enjoyed that little itty bitty thing, that was to... What I was doing was, I was just testing a little bit of latency there, um, because when I try to record games like this, oh by the way, welcome to This is the Police, uh, I found this game on Steam, it's a good, it's a good little game, um, I've played it before, uh, just to make sure I know what's going on, um, but... <laughs> it's my webcam doesn't like my computer right now for some odd reason I have no idea why but other than that let's get into the game guys yeah I honestly don't care hold up Mary Rogers sex maniac I'm completely unprepared today there we go. Much better. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. I love this guy's voice. Beautiful. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine, but even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm going to have to do something, and I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Okay, so... <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of backstory to this game. Apparently you're like a police... Like you're an ex-police officer becomes like police chief or something or other you gotta lead the squad or something while dealing with like the mafia or whatever I'm not entirely sure but this looks this looks like a really good game I did play it a little bit I didn't get real deep into it so this would be a brand new experience for me apparently we're in a press conference, press conference. good morning yesterday the mayor's office officially announced your resignation did this come as a surprise or did you know about it in advance Surprise, the mayor discussed it. I'm certain bullshit the mayor. What's the difference? What's the difference? What does it matter whether it came as a surprise? My business is my own. 
Do you already know the name of your successor? What the hell would I know that for? Of course not, and I don't think the mayor's office knows it, who it is either. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick uh, said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? I don't think so. He made up his mind to leave. I don't see anything affecting that decision. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe the police are co cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? I think that's bullshit. Excuse me, but that's a pile of horse shit. The Mafia and the police working together? Maybe they're in cahoots with the aliens. The Mafia are a bunch of low-life criminals. How about ask, someone asks a real question? Do you think with your, your personal relationship with America could be the reason behind your retirement? How should I know? You better ask him. Thank you. How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack! I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. If that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. That's not a very good idea. You should definitely save some money. That asshole just put the cigar out. 80 days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Oh, shit. Oh. I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. Oh, well then. I'll tell you what. That, uh, 
That was quite interesting. Head of Culture Department owns Villa in Italy. Civil servants' wages won't be raised this year, and Jack Boyd confirms police cooperation with the Mafia. I did no such thing. I did no such thing. Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick, he recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. What are that supposed to mean? Would you like to receive tips about how the game works? Show me what you got. I'm a 60-year-old police chief a few months away from retirement. I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job. You know what? For all intents and purposes, we'll go through the tutorial. Uh, so, apparently, we are the police chief and we're retiring. Okay. Freeburg PD organizes upcoming work assignments into shifts for today and tomorrow. In every shift, officers respond to crimes in progress, and detectives continue their investigations. You can move, you can freely move employees between shifts. All officers and detectives possess several several important characteristics. Professionalism shows the overall efficiency level of a poli of your policeman. A figure around 150 is considered average. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is not entirely reliable. While those whose professionalism is considerably higher than average are a safe bet even in a pinch. An individual's level of professionalism may rise and fall over the course of their career. Energy shows how tired your policemen are. The less energy your people have, the less reliable their work. And a policeman who is exhausted might fall asleep at the wheel or make a critical error during the job. Your employees use one point of energy after each working day and restore one point of energy after each day of rest. Your employees don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are hidden from, from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with any reason they can think of to take the day off, while others drink too much. You can only guess about these things, but you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behavior of your employees. We're going to start today. Responding to calls is the bread and butter of police work. You'll need you'll need to send officers to the scene of the crime before the timer expires. A mark on the map shows where the call came from. The further away the destination is from the police station, the longer it takes your officers to travel back and forth. So the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. A hit and run at the everyday mall. The easiest way to determine how difficult the task is to check how many units you're allowed to send on call. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat. Particularly risky missions give you the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. The number of slots is not the only thing to consider. Any available information from the location to the crimes of the crime scene, the presence of weapons, and so on. All of this you can tell seriously each case should be taken. A mission might look simple at first glance until it turns out into a brutal meat grinder, or a serious call can come in, which turns out to be a false alarm. A married couple excited for 
exit a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot back over a homeless man who had been digging through a trash can. The driver jumped out to help, but once he realized he'd hit a bum, he got back in the van and quickly drove away. Alright, we're going to send Purdy and Price. Take care of that. A fight at the last picture show theater. A theater manager reports that during the show of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with a red rosebud. Ah, ha, ha. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with his theater security guard. Right, we're going to send Yancey and Austin. Yeah, like I said, if you guys want to see more of this game, I actually do enjoy it. I think it's a really cool concept. So if you guys want to see more of this, just hit the like button, leave me a comment, send me a tweet, and we even get reports on what happened. When everything goes well, the police capture the criminals and nobody dies. But the truth is, sometimes criminals manage to escape. And just try to avoid any dead cops or civilians. Dead cops will hurt your roster, and dead citizens bother the mayor even more than living ones. And the officer escaped. Bastards. Price, you failed me. You worthless piece of shit. So, as I said, like, send me a tweet, you know, leave me a comment. It's not a huge deal. Alright, so now we got a lot of stuff to do here. An armed robbery. A shot. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store and made off with their whole collection of adult movies. The criminals fled off in a car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The owner is one Janet Brown who lives in the suburbs. It's in Kochi and Asano. And there's a fight. A brother and sister clash with each other over their deceased father's will. According to one of the lawyers, we don't dare separate them and our security guards off duty tonight. Purdy and Tsubaki. Offender caught officers unharmed. Civilians unharmed. Beautiful. I do have a question of the day for today's video. Um, I know, like, a lot of people at some points, like, think they want to be cops and stuff like that. So my question to you guys is, what did you guys want to be when you grew up? Since the average range of my... When your cops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask how to handle the situation. Try to deal with whatever comes up and don't waste your all your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your pay plate. The vehicle in question is parked outside the Brown residence. The sounds of moaning and laughter can be heard through the living room window. I think that's always a good idea when it, when it's just kids. Um, yeah, so what did you guys want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be either a football player or a professional wrestler when I, when I grew up. I still kind of do want to be a pro wrestler, but I don't see it happen. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things that I just don't quite see panning out. But, I'd like it. It'd be nice. Assault report. Beautiful. Everybody's doing pretty good. We had one offender escape, so that's not too bad. And it's now 8 o'clock, which for some odd reason means we can end the day. If you think you'll need a couple extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cop to come in and work overtime. But if they're f working flat out, they'll be too much more exhausted. Somebody's bound to work, make a mistake. Okay, that's what that's for. Okay. Uh, I think I'll be good. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. 
slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business, so you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission. And his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people. Old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Okay. Okay, guys, I'd like to thank you for joining me for this first episode of This is the Police. I'm trying to keep these episodes fairly short, like anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Um, that way they don't drag on. But uh, it looks like things are heating up, uh, mafia stories and stuff like that. So if you enjoyed it, make sure you smash the like button down below. Subscribe for more content. My Twitter and all that in the description of the video. And with that, I'm going to get up out of here. Peace.